Hey, my name is Brent here on Cloudy with a Chance Meeples. Welcome to Ideas, a time where we sit down with whether it be artists or illustrators or board game designers or publishers in the board gaming hobby and talk about how they got their ideas from just being ideas to the board games that we love to play and then fill our Calyx shelves endlessly. And today we have an, a fellow Canadian for the second month in a row. Actually, last month I uh, interviewed um, the designer of uh, Facilis. Um, and this month I have Gordon Hamilton or just Gord or Dr. <laughs> Dr. Matt, Dr. Pickle, too, Dr. Pithel, uh, Dr. Pickle, Pickle. Sorry. Yeah. 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 How, how's it going? It's, it's going well. Yeah. yeah? I'm here in Calgary and uh, expecting the new release of Santorini coming up in early 2025. So life is good. Right. And I was actually going to talk about that, but let's, uh, um, it's that that's going to be coming out just yeah, a that, few months. Yep. Right on. Yeah, that's that's I, the Roxley. Uh, that's the Roxley group putting that out. So I'm not intimately connected with it in right. one way. It's my baby. So, right. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but, um, let, let's bring this all back a number of years ago. Let's talk about your origin story in this hobby that we share board gaming. What did board gaming look like for you, whether it, growing up you played or just in your adult life you got into it or adolescence? Like, what did board gaming look like for you growing up? Um, my desire to play board games far um, outreached my family's wish to, to, to play board games with me. <laughs> uh, so I ended up playing all sides of uh, different different board games and mm -hmm. I, I was I was very much a, an introvert um um you know happy kid but mm -hmm. I, I would sit around and move around the table and play all sides mm -hmm. <laughs> so it, it sounds a pretty um pathetic start to board games but that was it did you uh did you have a favorite game or it was just like anything you can get your hands on um careers was one of my early games okay. um but that didn't really resonate uh, um, like all of those games, Monopoly and Careers and um, Stratego was much more, oh, mm -hmm. this, this looks cool. Mm -hmm. um, and a little game called Isola, which was a pure strategy game. I really loved that. Mm -hmm. But then I discovered Cosmic Encounters and mm -hmm. that was my game. Mm -hmm. And that just inspired me. And I was creating aliens and I just loved that game. Do you still play it? No. Okay. <laughs> um, it, it's, uh, but as a kid, um, coming up with the alien powers was the interesting thing. Okay. Playing the game was, was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, but it wasn't my, my, probably my favorite game to play, but mm -hmm. coming up with those powers. Oh my gosh. I love that. And of course that's that Santorini is a direct descendant of cosmic encounters. Hmm which we'll get into that momentarily, but um, what are you playing these days? Uh, I I like um, heavier Euros to play mm -hmm. with my partner, Sanya. So uh, we play uh, Coimbra, we play um, Rajas of the Ganges, we play Terra Mystica, um, these uh, heavier Euros. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, medium heavy Euros, but that's, uh, uh, and the latest is uh, Tylidum. Um, okay. So that, that's a game that uh, it just uh, entered our table about uh, five months ago, and that's a that's a really enjoyable game. I tweak most of my games that I play. Okay. So um, I, I I rarely read like if I if I see some problem in a game, I just change it. And okay. Tylidum, wonderful game, but I do have one little change that I do to. I think make it better. Okay, <laughs> but that, that's typical. I, I'm sure that's typical of board game designers is they are they are not uh, reverential about <laughs> other board game designers. They right. <laughs> yeah. I was going to actually ask you that. Um, you're big into math, obviously, and uh, I actually asked the same question to uh, Paul Solomon of Honeybuzz, and I don't know if I remember if I asked this to Reiner Knizia, who's also a mathematician. But do you find it challenging? to i wrote this question out i gotta make sure i uh i get it i get it right here do you find it challenging to enjoy games and explore games when you 
probably maybe just see numbers and just see the calculations and how, like you said, you, you do some changes. Like, do you find that challenging to be like, this might not be the most optimal play I could do, but I want to see what happens. Like, do you, do you explore yeah, I, or do you kind of just like, yeah, I, I have no, no problems doing that. I, I'm, I'm first and foremost, an artist with mathematical puzzly ideas. I create games like an artist, like um, my brush strokes are uh, these abstract mathematical ideas and I just put them together. And that that's my strength. My strength is not micromanaging every decision. And I am not a great board game player. Uh, there's, I, I get destroyed most, <laughs> most, most times that I play with, uh, with people here. So uh, yeah, that, it's a different skill set, designing games and, and playing games. I often say, you know what, you don't have to be good at your hobbies. You just have to enjoy your hobbies. And, you know, I, I, I play games, a lot of games um, in comparison to some people. And in comparison to others, I play very, few games um but i just i just love looking at the table and looking at at a game and be like i wonder what happens if i do this and then i just do that and i'm like oh i learned that's not a viable strategy or that was not a you know a good turn or whatever and th so it's kind of like a sandbox thing i don't like sandbox games per se because i'm like 30 to 60 minutes player that's kind of like my my sweet spot but i love just trying something hey i wonder what happens when this happens when this and yeah i i tend to lose more often than i win but there's there's another class of games that i love um and that is the the, the faster games like war chest war okay. chest I think is an absolute gem that's my son and my favorite game he's 19 now and uh like we we love that game um, Star Realms, like mm. fantastic game. Avalon, uh, like oh my gosh, I have never laughed so hard as in a game of Avalon, <laughs> and got so emotionally engaged. <laughs> oh, it's it's wonderful. So I yeah, I was gonna say I haven't played War Chest. I've played um, I played Star Realms. I played Avalon. I, I think doesn't War Chest have more coming out next year? Maybe. Oh, maybe I I, I don't know. I thought there were more factions for that's like the two player AEG game, right? Where you have where you've got the discs. Or, yep, you're, yep, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought I thought there was more content coming out. Well, there. There, there there should be because okay. it is a wonderful system, and like I I can't say and like it just feels good too, like poker chips in a bag. Mm. Oh my gosh, like that's an important thing. I will never own the game, um, uh, terraforming Mars. Not because it's not an awesome game, but I just don't enjoy the, the how it looks or the tactile. Oh, jeepers! But it's a wonderful game. I'm just mm -hmm. like, please come out with some some nice version of that. But War Chest is a wonderful game, and it feels just so good manipulating those chips. Mm -hmm. I'm, all in. <laughs> I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to get that to the table sometime. But uh, let's talk about Santorini. Um, came out a number of years ago, but the the story of Han Santorini or the history of Santorini, I'm not talking like real life history, but like when did you when did you start working on Santorini, and 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 how did that go? Because to my well, understanding, the, well. ori well. <laughs> the original <laughs> compared to what Roxley put out is very different. Yeah, so I, I started in 1985. Um, hmm. I, I woke up in December, middle of exams. And I suddenly looked at this poster on my wall and it was corporate executives climbing white buildings. Um, and I I just, uh, within half an hour, I had the base Santorini game. The only difference was, is that I was playing it on a four by four um, grid for two years. Mm -hmm. And um, that that the, the, the only thing that I got rid of in that first half hour was that it used to be Spider-Man characters so that there were cubes and you could move on the walls as well as moving right up. And so I got rid of that right away. Like that was the first half hour, I got rid of that. Um, and then played my first games with other people, um, like maybe 400 games with the, um, with a guy called um, Chuck Ersenbach um, in 1986 and just we we just loved it and mm -hmm. and i knew that at that point it was the best thing i'd done in my life 
And I knew that through my PhD thesis, I, I couldn't get the thing published. I sent it out to one guy and uh, he sent it back and said, oh, this game should be called Frustration. <laughs> Great. That was his only comment. Oh, man. So I, I And I was never, and I'm still not good at uh, salesmanship or, or selling my ideas. And I, I, I just, I keep on getting excited about new ideas. So mm. um, I don't have uh, Reine Knizia's uh, discipline at all. <laughs> At all, he's, he's I don't think many do. No, <laughs> so, yeah. So uh, that anyway, that that, that was uh, thirty-one years then until it actually got published, and it was a uh, it was it was pretty irritating. At many many times, I tried tried to resurrect it again, and mm -hmm. like I had God powers. I finally gave up in two thousand and four i think and published it myself just out of my basement just 160 copies mm -hmm. um, and i put together all of those white blocks it was an all white game and uh, it had eight god powers that i published then but i had like a whole bunch more that i didn't publish mm -hmm. that, and, and speaking of that and this will kind of wrap it around you said cosmo encounter kind of like spurred that on with all the alien races which oh, again yeah. I, I haven't played cosmic encounters um but i know the game and it has tons and tons of races um did you you said when santorini you had eight god powers when it got published from roxley like did you come up with like all of those like uh god powers or most of them but other people um, like Paul Saxberg and Matt Tolman. Um, and uh, th there's others that I'm not going to remember now. Um, my son came up with one. Mm -hmm. um, so th th there were a number of people who came up with, with some, but I, like, I would say, you know, 80%, 75%. Did you have a favorite? Do you have a favorite? Oh, of course I have favorites. Like um, <laughs> he Hecate is my all time favorite without okay. any doubt. Okay. Um, yeah. But uh, there's, there's many, there's many that I'm just, so in love with yeah. i really liked to be honest um i had it when my kids were younger and my kids just didn't get maybe i tried to push them into the box to play it and then they did, didn't so i was like you know what there's another family they're really interested so you know i let them have my copy and now i'm like man my kids are older and i would love to do that little chess match with my son now um but so i didn't dive into all like the advanced god powers but I really like the. Um, I think it's one of the um, the simple ones, the one the hibiscus flowers or whatever it is. Um, is it Pan? He can just win by jumping yeah. down from two levels. Yep. That's like probably maybe maybe the first one he ever came up with, and it's like the most simplest one of them all. But I just love that one because it just gives gives you another way to win, and that your opponent just has to make sure, like, oh man, this guy can't jump off a, a level two. Right, it's level two. If if you jump off level that's, two, you win. Yeah, or or uh, if you jump down two or more levels. You okay, win. that that's what it is. And so yeah. you just have to really watch like how you're building it out. And obviously, there's like what forty in the base and um the Pantheon edition. That's the the one that's coming out. Is that what yeah. it's called? Pantheon edition. Pantheon. Pantheon edition. Yeah. Uh, English is not my strong suit. I'm still looking what it is. Um, um. Did you add more uh, God powers in that one? Yeah, it's up to a hundred. A hundred. Yeah, yeah. Was, so it was a a lot of work, a lot of work. How how did you balance that? Like, because uh, uh, surely yeah. as soon as this thing that like is out in the wild, there's like day one, someone on BGG is gonna be like, this power is overpowered. Like, Absolutely. we can almost we can almost guarantee. So but like, how, how, do, how you, do you deal with? How do you deal with that as a game designer? Well, you come yeah. up with a mechanism like um, you are dealt six cards. You choose two of them. Mm -hmm. Then you hand those two to your opponent. They get to choose one and you get the other one. So if there's something that's broken, you make sure you don't give that mm. as one of the two. Mm -hmm. right. And that, that, that's a... I mean, that's a critical part of the game to for, for serious people. I'm sure that many non-serious players will just go through and just choose to randomly or just to choose to that they like the look of and that's fine but the official way to do it is uh does take care of that hmm. so it kind of puts it, it puts it into the player's hands whether how, how they want to deal with it yeah 
And, and it's interesting because uh, beginner players, for example, will find pan very powerful. Right. But more advanced players will find it, oh, it, it's quite balanced. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's, uh, it also can change over time. Right. Right. So did you did you do the the riddle of the Sphinx at all? Like, was that not at all? Not at all. I tried hard to uh, to come up with a, a cooperative game. It, not really my thing, but I did try, and and, and Gavin really wanted it. Um, but uh, he eventually had to jump in there himself, and uh, um, um, Paul and and James got involved as well. So yeah, and you. Know, you I, I, I'm assuming they've done a fantastic job. Like, um, I, I haven't played it. So you haven't uh, played the campaign. Nope, nope, I haven't. So I'm, I am uh, eagerly awaiting. That I, I bet. <laughs> wow, I bet. Yeah. So, um, I'm kind of jumping around here. Um, you also designed the like, Santorini, New York. Yeah. How was that different? Of that the was design much, space, much more difficult to design that than the original Santorini because it was a request by Spin Master. We want another game and we mm -hmm. want it to be North American focused mm -hmm. um, uh, for our market here. And uh, let's let's do it around New York. And then, then I had to come up with a game that's quite different from Santorini. It, it can't compete, but it has to have the same DNA. Mm -hmm. A much much difficult much more difficult to design under those very strict constraints mm -hmm. um, rather than just freewheeling it <laughs> <laughs> right how long did that one take you um maybe five six months wow now i'm not working on these uh like my primary stuff is to come up with math puzzles okay right. so board games i'm not sitting down and working on a board game for five, six months. I just, mm. uh, I'm working at it. Then I leave it for a week, two weeks. So oh, I have one idea, put it down. So it's, yeah, mm. it's not, uh, not my main stuff that I'm working on. Mm. You say you come up with puzzles that intrigues me. So outside of board gaming, you have mathpickle.com, right? That's kind of your other baby per se yeah. with Santorini and board games or whatever. Yeah. What, what is that? Uh, you say you go by uh professor uh, or Dr. Pickle. Yeah, I go for Dr. Pickle is my classroom name mm -hmm. and uh, I design puzzles for the K through 12 curriculum, but mostly for the elementary school curriculum. And these are beautiful, deep uh, puzzles that I struggle with, um, but they're easy to explain. Mm. To kids, so the kids can understand them, mm -hmm. and then uh, we we can we can just jump in and uh, explore these together. So this is really the way that math class should be structured, where you don't have a a god or goddess in front of the room with all of the answers, and all the kids are trying to catch up. That's just not the right dynamic. So in 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 the classrooms, what I try to do is I'm just rummaging around with the kids. Um, um, trying to figure out, oh, I, I'm, I can solve this little four by four. Okay. Can we, uh, can you guys work in the five by five and you guys work on the six by six? Let's see what we can get. So it's much more collaborative. Um, but for example, this six by six group could be competing against that six by six group that could both be trying. So there's a uh, competitive and co collaborative, but there's, uh, there's lots of laughter and mm -hmm. there's lots of really tough mathematics. So um, no, none of the, I published a book called The Infinite Pickle, and none of those puzzles have been solved um, at their highest level, but all of them can be the, their smallest little parts of them. Oh, those can be solved by grade two students, and and that's wonderful. So what what is this book? You say nothing's been solved at the grade 12 level. So uh, like, what is that? What I, do you mean? I, I don't mean grade 12. I mean, mathematicians have not. Oh, okay. um, sorry. Um, or, or computer scientists have not got a, a, a full understanding. Oh, we understand how to solve this. Whenever you get to a 20 by 20 square, oh, I know how to solve that. No, this, these are much more difficult. Uh, um, the, they don't uh, break down easily. So it's, uh, it's, they're wonderful. And um, um, there's, there's a lot of pedagogy that teachers can, can utilize 
uh, whenever uh, I call them infinite pickles. Mm -hmm. And that's because um, unlike Sudoku, where you have a puzzle and then you will have unique hints. Okay, the top left corner is a six. Right. Okay. These puzzles don't have any uh, unique hints. Instead, you describe it. And then that's that gives you an infinite series of puzzles. You've got a four by four, a five by five, a six by six, a seven by seven, an infinite number. Mm -hmm. So if you've got some um, kids that are doing really well and finish a pretty good solution for the five by five, you can just say with a snap of your fingers, work in the six by six before they celebrate and distract mm -hmm. the rest of the class and ego bask. I don't want uh, those kids who are top, top math students. I don't want them showing off that they're mm -hmm. that they're ahead. So I'll say, you guys work on the seven by seven. And then these slower kids over here, they're struggling. They finish something. But instead of uh, of giving them something five by five, you say, oh, you be the first in the class to work on an eight by eight. So then they feel good. And you say it just loud enough so these other kids mm. can think, oh, so you're, you're all the time muddying the waters. So there's a lot of pedagogy that I, I love to bring to the classroom um, with these beautiful puzzles. Hmm. That's really cool. You know, I wrote down um, you 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 make these puzzles, and I wrote down I'm, as fascinating as it is for me to like see puzzles and like you know like if I find like a puzzle book at a book uh, like at a bookstore or whatever, as fascinating as I am to see like oh man how can I finish this? how can I figure these puzzles out or whatever, I'm almost more fascinating to think man someone had to come up with these, which that's what you <laughs> that's what you're doing, yeah. And so I don't know, like, but I'm unlike just... most of those, I have not solved any of these. So wow. it's, a, it's a very, very different. Um, um, I'm creative, but I, I can't solve these. <laughs> right. Yeah. Wow. And so let's, uh, let's talk about what you're creating now. So you're still designing and you just, uh, you have uh, wiki histories. Yeah, yeah. So wiki. Let, let's let's dive into that a bit. What yeah. is that? Where did this come from? What is the whole idea of all of all of this? So first of all, wiki histories. In no way is it as good a game as uh, Santorini, but that's not its strength. Its strength is how do I teach problem solving and history in in the classroom mm -hmm. in elementary school and in junior high. How, how do I teach that in a way that's inspiring? So um, Wiki Histories are a series of, um, at the moment, 36 games. Each one is about 10, 15 minutes long. And the kids get in there and they read a few paragraphs about the history. Um, and then, they, they're, then they're against each other in this mini little game that can be printed out. I needed to have it cheap. So it's just going to be a PDF that um, with all of these games that I'm just going to share. So mm. that that's the, the essence is to have a really cheap game that can get into classrooms everywhere. Um, and that celebrates problem solving and history. Hmm. And so how does this work? Do you use dice or like, how, how does a game work? So here's uh, one wiki history. This is um, looking at the, uh, the Clovis people, uh, moving into North America. Mm -hmm. so this is uh, the Laurentine ice sheet. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is where you are. This is probably two kilometers of ice over Winnipeg um, okay. at, this, at this time. Like kids are just wowed by that. Like mm -hmm. it's an amazing thing. So um, how does it work? Uh, so this is a very basic game. And uh, you get to, for example, you're going to be the Clovis people. You can choose to put in, let's say, two strength here and then these guys might put in three strength here and you just go back and forth and um, then after you've uh, placed all of your people then it's time to attack and you just add up uh, let's say it's like this okay so you're you're going to attack a so is three more than two? Oh, yeah that, that works so mm -hmm. you uh, you would just remove these they'd be gone so very very simple there's mm -hmm. not nothing nothing let's but let's say it's like this then it could be two plus one plus one that's more than three if i'm attacking then i could erase your your three and we just again go back and forth with the attack and then it's scoring the person with the most territories wins 
So very, very simple, simple yeah. game. But these can come with uh, with wonderful um, histories. So I can okay. write down a fun little bit of history. Mm -hmm. um, and comes with a nice bit of art. So we can we can just go through a whole bunch of these uh, um, and introduce history to kids in a way that's fast and pithy. And are, is this realistic? Are, are, the, are the maps in any way realistic to real warfare? No. So it's very no. abstracted. Yeah. Uh, that has that's the disadvantage is of course that you know that 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 is extremely abstracted warfare. Mm -hmm. uh, but the advantage of that is that all of the maps have the same rules with just little creative bits in there mm -hmm. that okay, there's little bits of change. So that's uh, that's something that can actually work in the classroom. So I tried it out. Um, um, some of these new ones uh, just this week in a classroom in Toronto. Uh, and they worked well. On web. Yeah. Yeah. That's I, fantastic. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm really, I'm really confident uh, in the classroom, what works and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. and so I, I, I knew it would work and, and yeah, I've been working on this for, for years too. It's not like it's, it's brand new. Right on. Well, as we wrap up, this is really cool. This has been actually like, thought provoking and like something I can learn from in this sense as well, because I see, yes, you love designing games and you love the whole game aspect of it, but it's, it's so much greater. I'm getting the sense. It's so much more than just a game for you. Like this is like teaching. Yeah. School. Uh, you know what I mean? Like teaching kids, problem solving, teaching ki kids um, like life skills. And honestly, often that's what board games have the capability of doing, right? It has like, like forward planning, like different games have different things that you can learn, right? Whether it's like economics or root building or different things. And you're just bridging the two things into one, which I find really, really cool. So I think that you could remove mathematics from grade two entirely. No mathematics at all. The only thing kids do is they come in they play a board game the whole the whole grade two year mm. i am pretty confident that that will beat that that curriculum that playful curriculum by the time those kids get to grade six they will be better problem solvers better math people better in in on any metric i that's my prediction mm. so uh, I, I work with the alberta teachers association peripherally um but that's that's a hard sell right now right but that's yeah. that's my prediction um that you know after i'm gone someone's going to be experimenting <laughs> right. with that. Uh, and I have high expectations that, that that's going to be the way to go. Uh, my, my number one recommendation to parents uh, is that uh, in order to support the math classroom, forget about those math worksheets, adopt a board game. Because mm. the number one thing that we are trying to get out of elementary school math education, the number one thing is to get your kids to think to get mm. them to problem solve and board games are a celebration of problem solving. Yeah. It should be fun for you. It can be fun for them. Um, but it's that, that, that is an important skill set. Like it's as important as reading right. board games and, and books equal importance. Right on. Okay. So as we wrap up, if someone wants to know more about your stuff, obviously, um, mathpickle.com is that where people can come up or can find your puzzles and different uh, math curriculums all these things yeah and, and the infinite pickle that book is for free you can download it in german in mandarin and in english um, um so it, i i try to get everything there is free and right i try on. to keep no ads and there's nothing there that's fantastic so good puzzles <laughs> This time has flown back, flown by. This has been fantastic. And, um, you know, my whole thing with ideas is, you know, I believe the community is built on conversation, much like games are built on ideas. And I just want to, once again, thank you for taking the time to share your ideas and to en and encourage even me as a parent to stay engaged with my kids in like the math realm and in, in teaching realm and use board games as a device to teach kids. And so, yeah, I just want to say thanks so much for taking the time there, Gordon. It was a pleasure, Brent. This has been fantastic. So um, yeah, 
like I said, community built on conversations, much like games are built on ideas. Check out um, Gord and all of his stuff at mathpickle.com. I'll post a link in the description of this video so you can check out all of the stuff that he's been working on, we, uh, wiki history and whatnot. And then that's it. Until next time, my name is Brent. Grab your umbrella. The forecast is cloudy with a chance of meeples. Thank you.